normally met the number that said. And we're finally back. <laughs> What's up? Um, so I hope 2020 is treating y'all right. So far, it's been pretty crazy for me. Uh, just a little info. I quit my job so I can babysit. Um, I got a new tattoo. Uh, I was there for probably four hours. One session. It hurts. <laughs> it, como like, it hurts more. Que si la mete, you know? Okay. So it is right now, it's about 8 a.m. I'm sorry that I'm telling you all this information because I don't care. But let's finish my speech. I just, bruh, that shit was so annoying. Like, I took many, many takes. Like, I wanted to be perfected. And then on my last video, I messed up a little bit, but I was like, fuck it. I was like, whatever. Um, today I'll be talking to you about, well, y'all know what Grindr is. If you don't, it's a social media app used by lgbtq adults to meet up communicate with other lgbtq users and that's what i said in my speech because i can't say it's 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 an app used by gay people to hook up i mean i am in a starter class but okay but anyways um pretty much um this and these two incidents happened in Grinder, and they're probably my most scariest um, um, encounters. So for the first time, I'm going to be talking about sex. If you don't know what that is, then leave. Leave. Anyways, um, I remember this one time, uh, I met this guy, and I was like, oh, it's because, you know, I had... I don't know why, but like before, like I would like legit have types for a certain amount of time. Like I remember this like one time, like a sophomore year when I was like legit only attracted to white guys. And then I moved on to um, 11th grade, 11th grade slash senior year because I graduated in one year. So during that time, like I was attracted to Latinos and sometimes black guys. And so once I got out of high school, I was pretty much only attracted to black guys because actually my first time was with a black guy. Um, but I really do appreciate him because, you know, he was so nice to me and, you know, he helped me get the experience that I wanted. So pretty much, yeah. Um, so during this time, I was only attracted to black guys. And yeah. So just putting that out there. I mean, it's nothing bad. I'm... Nah, they were just scary. But not this one time. I remember, um, so I legit drove to an apartment complex because the guy, he was pretty cute. And he, you know, he told me to come through. He, I think he, he was in like his early 20s. And, you know, he had to go to work. And so, you know, I wanted like a quick, like a quick F-U-C-K. Because, you know, like back in those, those times, I was like a little hoe, like a little puta. Like, yeah, I was like a little puta. You know, I was sleeping with people left and right, you know, getting as much experience as I wanted. But I regret it because the first time that I, like, said, like, I'm like, me la metió en la culito, like, I was, like, legit, I sat with someone else the next day. You know? Like, I was like, bruh. So, and then I sat with someone else that same week. So, in one week, I slept with three people. And, you know, now, like, I had, I, the last time I had sex was on Christmas and um like christmas of 2019 so pretty much yeah so i went over and I, he told me where to park so it was my first time i had car sex after that i despised car sex or anything sexual related in a car like that shit pissed me off like well, I don't know like if you've seen me before but like i used to be like way bigger i mean i'm getting bigger now so yeah, so, like, it was very difficult for me to be in, um, certain positions. I mean, it's not really a scary incident. It was just a stupid one, because I, I couldn't. And, um, because my first time, he was, like, thick. Like, like, thick. But, um, pretty much, so I was, like, oh, I was, like, I can do this. Cause, but the thing is, the the guy, my first ever guy, he used lube. And so, um... Yeah, that was a tough experience for me because the guy I met in the car, he didn't use lube. He was like, 
like nine nine inches and he was like as thick as the first guy but he didn't have lube so you know i was just there i didn't know what to do like if you're in these situations there's if you can just leave because i regret that incident i regret it that was like the only encounter that i do regret because you know he was just too big it was too thick i couldn't take it like, I really couldn't. And, you know, he was just forcing it in. It was painful. It did hurt. That did hurt. My first time, it didn't really hurt. Because, you know, you know, he was, he was, he, he knew what to do with this guy. It's because, um, if I'm not mistaken, he was straight, but down low, curious, something like that. And so, it was honestly just very frustrating. And then, like, as he he legit like he nutted in me and i didn't like that and so you know i I drove home and i was like bruh and i legit drove like 15 minutes and i was like bruh and i'm written in the toilet and i'm like and i took it all out because i i couldn't but yes and then the stupid thing was that he texted me and then he was like because he sat with like three females and he was like and he like sat with like only like one guy so i guess i was the second one and so he was just like, come back tomorrow after work. I was like, bro, I'm not doing this shit again. Like, I lied and I was like, okay. So I blocked him. Now, this is the, this is probably the scary part because he will legit. No, 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 no. Because, Chris, if you're watching this, Chris. So, um, that time I didn't know what to do. So I told my friend, I have to say, friend. So I told my friend, Chris to you know hit him up and you know say whatever and so he was like chris was like yo and i was like i'm this man back off you know and then um i'm pretty sure you called him if i'm not mistaken and then um pretty much his mom answered and then you know he was like hey your son's gay he was like tell him to leave my man's alone or whatever and then you know he was the guy he was lying to his mom saying that oh that never happened and whatever but the thing that pissed me off was that because I blocked him after after that, he will legit make fake numbers and he would message me. He'll be like, hey, he was like, why are you ignoring me? All this other stuff. He'd be like, he would like, come back, whatever. And then it was honestly very, it pissed me off because I don't know why, but that was like my first encounter. It was like someone being obsessive. And you, it will legit happen. Like, it would keep, like, within the month that happened, it will happen. And so, you know, it was just honestly very frustrating. I've kept screenshots of uh, our conversation. But sadly, you know, after, like, like six months went by, nothing happened. So, um, I deleted them. I oh, should I kept them. But not because, okay, so I only kept them for the reason that, for the reason that he said, um that he took a video of my license plate. And I was like, what the fuck are you gonna do with that? What are you gonna do with that? <laughs> Cause if you don't know, you know, looking up license plates are illegal. You can't do that unless if you're like a cop or if you need to. So you can't really do that. And so, you know, I was worried. I was scared, don't get me wrong. Cause I don't know, cause you know, some people, they know people out there, but luckily nothing like that ever happened to me. So pretty much, yeah. And so that was it. Um, I didn't enjoy it. So I wouldn't say that I was raped because, you know, I gave consent. But, you know, but, but you do know you can stop consent at any time you are having sex. But, you know, my dumb ass didn't. And so. Um, and then the second time was um, I texted this guy and he's like, it was, it was after the gym. And so he was like, come over. And I was like, can I take a shower, like, at your place? Because I was like, I'm not... I don't know why, but, you know, like, there's some people out there that like that musky smell. Like, I'm... I'm No, I'm not into that. But, yeah, he was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, all right. And then he sent a picture of his dangling. <laughs> his dangling. And so, you know, it, it, it looked nice. So, I'm not going to lie. So, I was like, I bet. And, you know, this was during my whole phase. Like, fuck. Like, um... So yeah, and um, I I took a towel and I bought a change of clothes and I went and he gave me his address. It was in a gated community. Keep that in mind. 
So it was in a gated community and I was like, oh, okay. But he lived in like these apartments, townhomes type things. So yeah. And then um, he texted me his address and I, can, and I looked, it was through Grindr. And I looked and I was like, what number is it? And then he told me and I tried looking for it and I couldn't find it. And he said, no, go look at the back. I went to the back, right? And I was being all stupid. And then as soon as I noticed, because there was like a number like up front that like it was a number ahead. I think it was like two something. Fuck it. But it was three numbers. So the number into the front was a number ahead. And I went to the back and then I was seeing like the, the numbers align. And then as soon as I kept walking and then to my right, I did ask. See a sliding door open. And you know how like they have curtains on the sliding doors? Well, that was all the way to the to the left. And so the sliding door was all the way to the left as well. And it was at night. It was at night. So I looked over and you can dead ass, you can see a figure in the room just standing there. And I was like, you know, I was trying to be dumb. And you know, I was like, like where? Like what? Where's it at? And so and pretty much, like, he was just standing there, and it was just complete pitch black. There was, like, he was the only one there in that room. I don't know if there was, like, other people in there or something going on that happened. But, bruh, I'm so glad I did not approach that. I didn't want to go in there. And then I walked around. Like, as soon as I started, like, to walk around to, like, where there was light, um, I looked at my phone, and he blocked me. And I was like, okay. And I was like... I didn't want, yeah. So I wasn't going to put myself in that situation. I don't know why, but the Lord keeps defending me. And, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm gay. I'm gay. And I'm stupid. I was stupid. And now I'm still stupid because I still meet guys at night, you know? But now, you know, I'm talking to them. And so I meet them. And if they don't want that requirement, then I just don't talk to them, you know? Um, but yeah, I've had had a few, I don't want to sound cocky, you know, but I've had had a few obsessive guys and, you know, some that they never sat with me and they're still obsessive, you know, like just be careful out there. You know, there are people, there are people that will like try and get to you and that's pretty much it. Um, uh, those are pretty much my two scary incidents that happened. Well, they're not really scary. You know, they're just life lessons. So, pretty much, yeah, those happened to me on Grinder. All my incidents happen at night, and it's just so stupid. Like, they tell you to meet at a public place, and I'm telling you to meet at a public place, but I still don't do that. Ugh, fuck. Okay, anyways. So, that's pretty much all I got for you today. Um, I just wanted to go about this, tell my stories, because I just finished my public speaking assignment, and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to just record a YouTube video. Alright, so, you know, my motto, <gasps> I didn't say my motto, si no me la meten, no me merece, si no me la meten, no me merece, si no me la meten, no me la meten, no me merece. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you know, as I say, si no me la meten, what? What? What puta? No me merece.